Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements Photo Fix project. Now in this one, we'll be removing this logo right down here using Photoshop Elements. This is fairly straightforward. And I'll show you this with a couple of different Photoshop Elements techniques to do this removal. One for the text and then one for this outline out here, this logo pattern. And the reason why you might have something like this show up is maybe you lost the negative or the negative was damaged and all you had was a print. That might be the case. Possibly the photographer kept the negatives, which frequently happens with professional studios. They went out of business and disappeared. So the negatives are again gone. And you want this scanned and then used again. But again, that logo is on there. So lots of reasons why you may want to remove a logo from one of your pictures. Easy to do here in Photoshop Elements. And before we start this project, make sure that you take a look at my channel as well for additional Photoshop Elements projects. I have literally hundreds of projects that are for Photoshop Elements. And also take a quick look at my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. It's the best way to learn this program. Okay, we'll start off at the very beginning here. I'm just going to close this down. So here we go. And the first thing is to download that sample picture. You may have your own images, the same techniques work on your images, but I'll show you where that sample is in case you wanna use it. I have a link for that in the description. And that will then take you to that image on the web. Let me bring that up. And it's right here. And there's the link. And just right click. And you want to save image as right here. Save it into a location on your hard drive. I have a projects folder that I use. So I'll save it right there. Choose save. And I've now saved that and downloaded it from the internet. So we can then bring that up inside of Photoshop Elements. Let's get this out of the way. When I open up that project file and open. Here we go. And there's that file. These files are for a different project on a different YouTube channel that I have. In this case, I was talking about how to do t-shirt designs for a red bubble. If you're curious about that, I'll put a link for that in the description. But here's the one that we want right there. Just choose open. And there it is. I'll just dock that right there. Okay, let's zoom in on this. And we'll use two different techniques for this. As you can see here, we have the text in here, which is pretty thick, pretty easy to work with. And then we have this border out here, which is pretty thin and much more difficult to work with. So let's do this outside first. And I'll use the old fashioned standard technique of just using the clone stamp tool and paint this out. It's fairly easy because we have real solid colors over here. The background is blurry and it's pretty solid. If you had a lot of detail in here, that'd be hard to match. Then it's difficult to use the clone stamp, but this is ideal for the clone stamp. No problems with this. So we'll start over here. Clone stamp tool right here. There's a brush size. It's a little bit on the small side. If I go just a bit larger than this, I think I'll change this to a 30. You want to have it just a little ways away from what you're clone stamping over. You want to have a soft edge brush. So make sure you're in the soft edge brush. It's easy to see, soft edges. You roll over this, it'll say soft round. And then grab a spot to copy from. I'm going to grab right here. I want to get this edge done first. I'm going to grab right up here. Hold the Alt key down and click on a spot like that. And then come down and you can see where that aligns. And I'll go right there. Then I'll just pull it in. And that gives me that edge up here. And it also gives me a place to copy from. Then it's just a matter of going around. Now you may see this duplicating happening. That's where I'm beginning to run in on the one that I just duplicated. So you may have to do this a few times. Just to click like this, choose a new spot, click again, new spot and come in here. Just do a few times like this. Just working around. To move the image, hold the space bar down, give it a shove like that. And then same thing, Alt and click. And I'll bring this around over to here. And right here, I have to do this edge again. So again, I'll come in here, hold the Alt key down, find the edge and click. Bring that down, line that up. See here, it's kind of off right there. You can kind of see that. Line up that edge and then you can easily paint that edge out. Okay, that takes care of that part of it. A little bit right in here. Let me just fix that. Real tricky here, just because of that dip that's happening right in there makes it a bit more difficult. So for this, I'm going to bring my brush size down smaller. I use the left square bracket, which is the brush size smaller key. The right side bracket goes larger. Again, Alt key down, click, and I can just get that one little bit right here, like that. Let's go over to this side, Alt key and click, and let's get that out of there. We can now take care of this. Because I'm so close to this edge up here, I'll stick with a smaller brush size, a little bit bigger. This is the right square bracket right here. Hold the Alt key down and click, and then come in here and let's just get that painted out. Now we're gonna be going off of this edge up here. You see here how we're going up into that other section up there? When that happens, just move or rechange your position, choose a new position. On most things, if you are working horizontally, it's gonna work out for you most of the time. Now we have, do have this edge, so again, same thing. Alt key and click, I'll pull that edge over here. 
and then paint down from the edge like that. And then we'll just do the same thing right in here. There we go. Now I can begin to come around and I'll be changing my position just a few times in here, grabbing from new spots as I move down this. Down here, let's go over in here, Alt and, actually I'm gonna go right here, Alt and click and bring that straight over and paint that brown, kind of staying away from those letters in there. That should work for down here as well. And that it did. Those align perfectly. Spacebar again. Okay, getting a bit of that ghosting. So I'll come out here someplace, Alt and click. And I'll just move in like that. There we go. Whenever you begin to see ghosting, just move your brush and grab from a new spot. And then finish that off. And that takes care of the first part of this, which we use that clone stamp tool for. And it works out well if I do the control zero keyboard shortcut, looks perfect. Okay, let's now do the other technique. I'm just going to grab the zoom tool here and let's zoom in on this. And this works out well if you have a large enough area that you can easily select it in here. I'll be using the magic wand right here. And because there are some colors that may be similar to some of the colors in here, it's very similar, like right in here, might be along that edge. I'll keep my tolerance fairly low. And I'll change the tolerance here to a 15. 32 is normal, 15 is on the small side. Where it says contiguous, check this, that means touching. And we'll be doing this one letter at a time. That way I don't accidentally get something else somewhere else in the picture that happens to match that. So we'll start off here with the S. Looks pretty good. And then come down and change this to add to selection right here. And we'll work along and try to grab all of the letters this way. There we go. Just Move along like that and see if we can get everything selected in here. Looking good so far. Now it's not catching clear out to the edges and that one went too far. See, we grabbed too much. I'll use the control Z to undo that one. And let's see if we can get that again. There we go. And it's working around grabbing these letters one at a time. And that's good, okay. Now, if I zoomed in on this, you'll see that we didn't get clear to the edge. There's a little bit of a thin edge right there that we didn't get. We need to grab that edge as well. You can see it really well right down here. So for that, go up to the Select menu. Come down to Modify. And you want to expand. Let's expand this just by two pixels. I think this will be enough. Choose OK. And there we go. We're just outside. Now, it's not quite correct over here or right over here. Everything else looks fine. So for those, I'm going to change my tools, go back here to the magic wand. And this has come down to the selection brush tool. The size is way too big. I'll bring the size way down again to 15 pixels. That's too big. And I'll bring this down to a three pixel brush right here. That looks good. And we're on add. And then I'll just come in here and just brush this in and catch that little bit here. Let's do that right over here. There we go. And I'll use the space bar to move this around and double check everything else. That all looks fine. Move it over here. Looks okay up here. It's a little bit off right down here. Let me just catch that bit right there. Let's check our second word down here. Let's grab that bit right here. And the end right in here. There we go. And right over here, looks like it's missing the thin pieces. That's fine, this adds those in. All I want is to have the selection just a little bit larger than the letter, so that the letter is totally contained inside of that. And that looks fine. Let's now back out just a little bit with the zoom tool and the slider control right here. That's what that looks like, that's great. Let's now go up here to the edit menu and come down to fill selection and Content Aware, choose OK. There we go, that filled that. Use a Control D keyboard shortcut to undo. Just a few little spots we need to pick up afterwards. I think we can fix these with the Spot Healing Brush tool. Let's click on those and let Photoshop Elements do all the work for us. And that's perfect. This looks kind of weird. Just fix that while I'm here. So I'll come over here someplace, Alt and click. And then let's just paint that out. There we go. Okay, control zero back to fit. And we've now taken out that logo down here, the text and the logo design and clean up the photograph. It could now be printed out or saved out 
and then have more prints made from that. Let's now save this project out and recommend saving it as a different file name, just in case. Go up here to File, come down to Save As. And I'm just gonna change the name here to Wedding Logo 2. I'll put a number on that. I tend to number my images and choose Save. I'll set this at maximum right here, 12 quality, and OK. And there we go. It's now saved out, also saved as a different name. So I have both copies now, the original copy with the logo on it and this new copy without the logo. And if you want to see more projects here on Photoshop Elements, take a look at my channel. I, again, have hundreds of courses over there for Photoshop Elements. Some are more complicated than others. I do some basic stuff like this. I also do some more complex, involved, advanced level projects. Don't forget to check out my training course. It is the best way to learn how to use Photoshop Elements. Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe as well. I do new videos all the time here, so you don't want to miss out on any of those. So subscribe so you get those. And I'll see you next time.